Hey, I'm Chan Lawson, and I'm going to walk you through how to play my song Across the Distance. Um, this song is from the Stay EP, and um, let's just go ahead and dive in. Sheet music is available at the link below, so go ahead and click that, and so you can follow along. Um, this is a really, really simple song, and I know I say that about a number of my pieces. Um, however, I really mean it about this one. It's only four chords, and it doesn't really change very often. And it's not really meant to, to be honest. Um, it's inspired by this Mary Oliver poem um, that's really just meant to be about mysteries and just almost wondering like what life is about. And so there's not a whole lot of like sharp direction, kind of turn kind of things in this. Um, so right, here we go. I'm going to walk you through the first chords because there's only four of them and then we'll build everything else from that point on, okay? So I'm just gonna play the chords for you really quick. Believe it or not, that's it. Really, honestly, for the entire song, that's all there is to it. So, um, of course, there's some variations here and there, but um, let me show you what those chords are. And actually, the second chord, we don't even really hear. It's really difficult to notice a change. I'll show you what I mean here. All right, so the very first chord is going to be an F major 7. We have F, A, C, E. Now, in the album, or when I was writing this, I actually wanted it to go to an A minor, but I really um, liked where it was sitting. And so, if you look at my hands, that second time through right there, that's really kind of where I had the A minor. Um, if you look at my original hand sheet, as far as the, the, the chart is concerned, um, I'll post that in the link below. So if you want to check that out also, you can see the handwritten chart. But really, the emphasis um, is, I'll show you. Did you see it? It's right here. Now the next measure. Right there is that A minor, but I, I really actually I, I don't, um, I don't really bring it to a lot of attention. Right, I don't make it very noticeable. It's very subtle and it's passing. And honestly, that F, it it's kind of just still holding on to it to be truthful. So, all right. So you've got that F major seven. Next chord is going to be G. We're keeping that E though, we're keeping that six in there. So, right? So I'm just rotating, I've got the F, and then I'm playing the major seven, and then I'm playing the root, in my right hand, going back and forth between F and E. And then over the G, it just drops down a step. And that's really all the right hand is doing for the most part for the rhythm of this section. Now we are going to bring in some melody here in just a bit, but we'll talk, over, talk about that in just a second. All right, what is the left hand doing? So let's check it out. Really basic. So if we put those two together, all right, that right there, that is the C chord. 
as you've heard me say a gazillion times, I love doing a different bass and the um, in the left hand. So instead of the root, instead of going down to a C, I'm just going to the third right there. And again, it's really subtle. It's really in the passing. There's no attention drawn to it. So if we if we look at this section of where that C is. It's almost like a C major seven. So we have, you can look at it and it looks like an E minor, but it's really not, honestly. The C is not in there, but it's meant to be a C. Okay, I'm gonna play those very first four measures. Here we go. And that really is the premise behind the entire song. Now this is where it gets a little on the tricky side because the melody in the right hand is actually being played by the the higher fingers, by the you know fingers three, th four, and five. So while your right hand is doing this, while it's playing those notes, um, your right hand, it gets a little tricky because the top notes, three, four, and five, these three guys, um, they're actually the ones playing the melody. So this is where it gets a little, uh, you know, squirrely, but you can figure it out. You, it's, I have faith in you. I'm gonna play the melody, and I'm just gonna play a block chord in the left hand. That way you can see um, in context where the harmony is with this, okay? Let's look at the melody. So again, starting on the F major seven, Okay, if you notice right there, that's that C major seven part. But again, I'm still keeping my root as E. So that's my C major seven, but the melody is that major seven. Right, so if you look at the melody of just that section really quickly in the right hand, it's gonna go like this. Continue the melody. So it's pretty much identical, except for the very end, right there at the very end, over that C chord, that C major seven, we're actually approaching the F to E. There's my third, and then to the root. We finally hit that root, right? Um, but not in the left hand, of course, in the right hand. So if I take the last four bars of that melody, that whole structure, that section right there, it's gonna sound like this. Great, I'm gonna play the entire melody from start to finish of just that melodic section. Okay, here we go. There we go, there we have it. So it's really meant to like, as with everything, take your time with it, right? 
Um, take your time playing it when you're playing it live or with friends or what have you, but also with learning, like really take your time with this. It's a little tricky to get the hands together. Um, even I am having, uh, you know, every now and then having some issues with it. So take your time with it. It's, it's not meant to, um, you know, to hastily be put together. So, all right, let's go to the next section. Okay, what's going on there? So in the left hand, it's exactly what we have been doing the entire song, so nothing new there. With the right hand, you guys have heard me do this before. It's one of my favorite things to do as far as writing or technique or what have you. Um, and it's tension. Again, it's that tension release. That tension adds such a great sound. Um, if we were to just play just the main melody, it would sound like this. Which is fine. It's very pretty. It's lovely. It's fine. It's totally fine. But to add some extra color to it and just something really unique as far as the sound is concerned, um, I'll, I'll show you. Um, so with that melody, that's just the major seven going down to the A, E down to A, right? But what I love to do, a lot of people would either play sixths. nice, very pretty, so on and so forth. Or some people would actually just play the octave, which is just fine too. Very nice. What I love to do though, is I take an octave and then I move one note, either a half step or a whole step, depending on what key it is. And it sounds really unique, so like this. So if we have that E going down to an A, I take an octave, and then I move my thumb up a note or a step. Now technically, if you look at it, if I were to bring this E down here, it would sound like this. Not very melodic, right? Um, I wonder what that actually would sound like. Uh, let's, let's try it really quick. Um, so it would sound like, uh, like this. Because again, we're going from the major seven to the third. So it would, it's gonna sound like this. Um, <laughs> maybe not, you know? I mean, maybe for some of you guys, you'd be like, yeah, this is really cool. Or maybe it's a monk thing or something, you know, Thelonious monk or something. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, if we were to take this again, so we have the E come up an octave. So again, with that melody note, if you have an octave, and then I take it up a step. I don't want to take it up a half step because then it messes up with the key I'm in, right? So you want to take it up whatever step you're in the key of. And so it could be a half step or it could be a whole step. Um, in this case, it's a whole step, right? So again. Now, same thing with the G chord, with the melody being I'm just doing an octave and moving it up a step. I just love that sound. I do. Um, I kind of stole it from Bill Evans, to be honest, the jazz pianist Bill Evans. He does that a lot. And I think I've maybe mentioned this in a couple of videos to where it's kind of like a, a, a cluster sound is what they kind of call it. Um, so if you look at like a C minor, and I'll just, for those who have not seen this, um, this is what it is. If you have seen this, just bear with us just for a second. I just want to explain it. It won't take very long. So if we have a C triad, C minor triad, excuse me. A lot of times what we would do in jazz is we, to add some color, we would add that nine. But what I love so much is that tension between the D and the E flat. Right? It sounds a little bit odd by itself if, you know, just those two notes. But if you were to play a C minor chord, moving this D all the way up here to this octave, 
That's where the magic is happening right there. I love that sound. Um, you know, I mean, when, when it comes to jazz, it's fine, actually. Those two notes right there, those clusters, that half step, right? Which technically doesn't really work, but sonically, it's magic. So I'm just basically taking a half step and I'm just moving it up here. It's glorious. I love that sound. Okay, I'm rambling at this point. Let's finish this thing up. So if you'll notice the left hand, it really is just doing that. Um... Now, if you want to be really creative, you can take that melody that we're just doing. And you can try to bring it down an octave. Um, I gotta be honest, I don't know if I've tried it myself and maybe it's something that I'll do. Um, I have to be honest, I haven't really played through this song very much since the recording, to be truthful. So um, this is actually benefiting me as much as it is you as far as learning this. So we're kind of learning it again together. I'm going to keep playing through and uh, we'll go from there. Here we go. So again, that melody is really, really simple. Um, I'm gonna take it down an octave just so you can see it a little bit better instead of it being all the way up here. Um, that melody is E to A, D to G. Again, we're almost always landing on really strong chord tones, right? That's really important. Um, so that next part. So. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm wrong. That very last note is actually a D, not a B. So my mistake, let me play through that part again. So I'm gonna play that melody. Um, I'm actually gonna bring it down an octave so you can see it instead of it being all the way up here, just visually, but just um, think about playing it an octave higher, uh, just so you know, okay. So I always put the melody on top, just so you know. So the melody's on top, and then that tension note, that's usually the one down below because it's um, not as prevalent sounding, okay? All right, so I'm gonna play through that section, and then we're gonna move on to the next section, okay? Here we go. I tried to take it at a slower pace there just so you could follow along. Um, again, the sheet music is really helpful through that section, okay? All right, let's go to the next section. Guess what? It's basically just repeating what we've already done in the very beginning. You know that part, right? So it goes to that whole section there, and then 
Does this sound familiar? It should, just like it is in the very beginning. So you've got the very beginning of the intro without the melody, and then you have melody, let's say melody number one, and then melody number two, and then it goes back to melody number one. And then it goes to this section where the right hand is kind of pretty much doing exactly what the left hand is doing. Let me show you what's happening. Right? Super easy. Um, basically, it's just outlining those chords again. So if we have... That's over that F major. We're staying there for the G. Back to the F. Okay, that section one more time. If you notice when I'm doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and just dive in. I'm gonna get some detail here. Not every single note is the exact same level. It's not da 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 da, right? So it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. But as far as where the accents are. They're almost always in the downbeat. I don't want to say always, but for right now they are. Um, I saw I was overdoing it. I was exaggerating it pretty significantly. Um, so again, it sounds like this. Now when you float that with both hands together, And then if you also notice, I'm really pulling back when that left hand goes down to that E for that C major seven. So pull back there, take your time with that. Again, as with every song I've always talked about, it doesn't have to be a really steady metronome. It doesn't have to be, sound like a clock, to be honest. Okay. That section is done. Let's look at the next section. Let me play it for you. So what's going on right there is some improvisation, just again around those two chords. I probably will never be able to play it exactly like it's written or how I recorded it, um, because it really wasn't meant that way. I know it's difficult to explain, and you're like, what the heck, then how am I supposed to play it? I'm gonna show you. Um, as I've shown you before, I'm a really big fan of doing interplay, so like one note and then one note, one note, one note, um, kind of like this. If you go back and look at the video for Stay and then also for One Day You Finally Knew, um, I talk about this. And actually, on One Day You Finally Knew, I give you an exercise over the E minor part. Um, so if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and check that out. So what's going on right here is I'm just basically playing around with the four notes of an F major 7 chord. And you can really play these notes at random, honestly. I know you think I'm crazy, but you honestly can. I'm gonna show you. I have no idea what I'm playing. I really don't, honestly, and it's, I'm not meant to. It's meant to just have fun and kind of experiment, and I'm basically just playing around these chords.
his notes. I'm going to do the same now over G. I'm still keeping that E and F. Have some fun with it, right? This is where you get to have some fun, do your own thing. And honestly, you know what? Something came to mind. I mean, if you're doing this on your own, experiment. It doesn't always have to be up here. Still doing, but da, 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 da. I'm still going the interchanging of the hands, but now I've just brought it down an octave. Right? Have some fun, experiment, um, and just enjoy it. Right? This is we're meant to be enjoying music. It's good for our soul, and it's giving you a unique sound that only you are going to produce, which is really cool. All right, what happens next? pretty much the same thing. You're just floating away. When um, Stephen Price was mixing this, he was also the studio engineer that recorded it at Abbey Road. Um, when he was mixing it, I asked him, I said, can you make it as if the piano is literally just sliding down the hall slowly, almost as if it's just kind of like rolling away down the hall. And so obviously that just takes a couple of things. It takes lightly playing and then loads of reverb, just like tons and tons and tons of reverb. And so really that's how the piece just ends. It ends with that really just those two chords, F to G, and just playing and getting softer and softer as you play along. So that very end. So if you imagine a piano <laughs> rolling down your hallway or a stairwell or a street or something, what is it going to sound like? That's exactly what I was trying to go for. All right, let's review really quick. Um, so the very beginning, you've got this. Right, and then we go next to the melody. You've got that part, great. And then the next section. I love that part, it's so floaty, that's my favorite part. Um, again, experiment, if you wanna play ba da, and then jump down and do that with uh, both hands. Um, let me show you. Right, so on and so forth. If you want to, you can. Um, be careful, because it might sound like really just kind of jumbly and just kind of too busy. Um, but that's entirely up to you, okay? And then it goes back to the main melody we all know, right? And then it goes to the lovely, lovely float. As I said in the beginning, it's really meant to be simple. Uh, the song is meant to be enjoyed by you and by your friends and those that are listening to you as you play. 
Um, so I hope you have fun with this song. Honestly, this was the one song that was a little bit challenging during the recording session, to be truthful, um, because I felt like it was almost too simple. And I'm so glad that I stuck to my guns and was like, no, 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 we need to do this. Um, because I really love this song. I really am very happy how it turned out. And it would not have turned out the way it did without uh, the, the team behind it, particularly Stephen Price, um, the engineer, who just just took, he, he, if you've ever gone to Stephen Lee Price's studio, he has this jar. You should ask him when, when you go there, when you go and visit him. Um, he has a jar tucked away. It's very hidden. And inside this jar is like this magic dust. And so what he does is he gently opens it on a cold, dark night, and he takes this dust and he just spreads it all over the mixing board and then just like magic happens. And it's unbelievable. So really, that's what happens. But he does. He has an immense ability to make anything I do just tremendous. And uh, I'm really grateful for that guy. All right. I hope you're well. Leave a message down below if you have any questions. And um, thanks so much. Enjoy. And I will talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.